with the rockets and all that. But whenever it gets to the ground troop, when ground troop is needed, Biafra will provide 15,000 men to support Israel. A lot of people will say, you protect yourself first. We are protecting ourselves. Are you not seeing it? Have you not seen how we protect ourselves? Have you not seen that for the very first time in the history of the Islamic State of Nigeria, uh, the people shouting for Biafra is being declared wanted? Tag the terrorist. Have you not seen it? It means that we are fighting and also protecting ourselves. It is not easy for them to kill like they usually do. So they have seen that the new generation of Biafra are those you don't mess around with. So do not worry. If you are not a Biafran and worried about us, promising 15,000 men to Israel if the time, when the time comes for the ground troop, don't worry about us. Worry about yourselves, who is being butchered in your various localities in Nigeria. Worry about yourself, whom your people are living in IDP camp, in the Middle Belt, in the Northern Nigeria, in the Southwest. Don't worry about us. We are not in IDP camp. For the fact that Biafras are not living in IDP camp means that we are protecting and defending ourselves very well. And today, we can boast of 100, over 130,000 men of the Biafra Liberation Army, the Biafra Resistance Fighters. All we lack is more weapon. That's all. All the terrorists that have invaded Nigeria and the you are only concerned is what their friends are doing. You are only concerned is what their friends are doing. Doing and how they affect their freedom. But remain the covenant of God. lynched a woman in the barrack. Of course, they will come to deny as usual. You think they will come and accept it before? You come, you think that the Nigeria terrorist organization called ARMY will come and say, oh, we did, yes, uh, we are investigating it. The guy, he was a Boko Haram and he killed the woman. No, they will deny up to the last minute. Even in the Okuma community, when they went there, to attack the community, burn the community down. Did they not come to deny it? They were the ones sharing the video to prove how brutality, what brutality they have meted to the people of Oklahoma community. When the heat get too hot, they deny it. They deleted the post they made. So who doesn't know Nigeria? I mean, 
as a terrorist organization. It means that you don't know history of Nigeria. Biafra has come. And this year, the declaration of Biafra is happening. After that, we will have the right to do anything as a government. Believe me, after this year, it can never remain the same. So let them escalate whatever they are doing in the Middle East so that the eye of the world will be out of Nigeria. I will be here to also answer questions to those who may have some relevant question pertaining the security threat on Israel in Nigeria and, of course, the proposal for the Biafra government to provide 15,000 men whenever the time is right for the ground troop, if Israel needs it. Thank you. And uh, the media team, you can take charge from here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ebu PM. Uh, Minister Information, please uh, come up. Mazis Ali. Yes. They will, Muchinoke, they will, Prime Minister. Uh, what a good leader will do in time of war is to give hope and assurance to the people. That is what you've just done. And the Biafran people are very happy to have you as their prime minister because you have just done what a leader is supposed to have done. Biafran stands with Israel from now till eternity. Yes, my minister, bam, bam, bam. we are here again. Over to you, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, my Sonia Parawa, uh, Ebu Minister of Information. Greetings to our Abato B. Atakata Abosia, our numero uno of the Afro land, Prime Minister, His Excellency, Mazi Simon Epa. We appreciate you, Mazi. And uh, fellow Biafras and friends of Biafra and the media and journalists that are watching right now, please, uh, we're going to be bringing you in. As I bring you in, please do not hesitate to raise your hands and then. Um, and they bring a very relevant questions to the Prime Minister as uh, regarding the topic uh, we have here. And uh, immediately you are going to get answers. And please uh, note that you have just 60 seconds to do that as we have um, uh, almost uh, a thousand people, close to a thousand people watching right now and uh, participating in this uh, space. Please, as you're coming in and you have a very relevant question, uh, as to what is happening right now and how we are related to this, please bring your question up and you have 60 seconds to do that. We already have people in the room. And uh, let me quickly start with um, Ifai Madumere. Ifai Madumere, uh, even though your hand is not up, I just pick you. And while I wait for others to raise their hand, you have 60 seconds. If you have a question, please go ahead and bring it. Yeah, I greet everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Honorable PM, I greet you. My question is this. It goes to our leader, Mazinam De Carlo. Is there any mechanism too in securing that facility, that arena where he's been held, should in case if any of these uh, interior plans is also geared towards that environment. That's, that's my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any issue about the our leader's uh, detention is something very sensitive at this point. And for that reason, I will not address it. But let me tell you, the Afrans are ready to secure him and rescue him from that place. He was the one, and he's still the one delaying us. Thank you. I'm sure you got that. Uh, that last, uh, the answer he gave you, which you should also begin to ponder upon. And uh, we move. Thank you, uh, if I uh, Please uh, quickly bring your question, uh, Rage and Fury. Please, you have 60 seconds to do that. All right, thank you very much, my people. Greetings. My name is uh, Regent Fury. I'm a proud local Biafran. And first, before I, I ask my question, I want to say a very big thank you to the Biafra Agbadaguru. That is the Biafra Thunder. 
that strikes the zoo from all corners, you understand? Thank you very much, sir, for the great work you are doing for us. On behalf of all the Soko and Urubu Biasa, I want to say we are pleased with what you are doing for us, and we are totally behind you. Thank you very much. My question is this. Uh, is U.S. aware that Nigeria is funding Hamas? And how does the U.S. see Hamas? Do they see them as terrorist organization or what? And if U.S. is aware that Nigeria is funding Hamas, why U.S. is funding Nigeria? Because we see the evidence when they supply their weapons to Nigeria to come and keep us in Jaffa and our army neutralize them and seize those weapons. So those are, those are my questions, my Prime Minister. I don't know if you can answer. Th thank, thank, you. You, thank you very much. U.S. is aware of everything. Everything. Of everything. Are you surprised? Is now attacking Israel. The same America talk. going to be the president of America. That is going to be somebody like Obama. And every policy you see today is the policy of Obama. Obama pro Islamic State. Now let us go back to the time. America pumped under Obama, pumped weapons to North Africa. They were supervising it. They were supervising it. They were blockade. They were blockade. Average American, average European do not know who they are. They fall, do not know who they are. They fall, hundred people they know nothing about. What happened? Dead people they know nothing about. What happened?
was not happy with that. Several times, if you all can remember when the airplane was shut down, and Russia accused Turkey of buying the gas from ISIS in order to fund them. This was going on. Everybody, those who I were interested in reading what is going on, uh, know what I'm talking about. That was how ISIS came on board, using America's arms supplied by Obama. So Donald Trump came. Many of us who understood what is going on and how Donald Trump can stop this nonsense. We supported Donald Trump. We supported Donald Trump because he was the right, right man then. But many people was calling Donald Trump a racist. He hates blacks. We saw beyond that. We saw beyond a man who was just abusing blacks. It was not just about abuse. We saw something beyond abusing blacks. And by the way, was there anything he said about blacks that were not true? Is there anything he said about Nigeria criminals that were not true? Is it that Nigeria is a shithole? Is it a lie? Or is it because it was coming from him? So, you know, nobody can come out and say what Trump said was a lie. But why was a white man saying it? Why is it was a, ma a white man who said it? That was the problem. And that is the hypocrite. Political correctness that we see ourselves today just destroyed the human dignity, the morality we have as a people. You are saying it, you are wrong, you are the wrong person to say it. We supported Donald Trump because of that. And when he came on board, what happened? ISIS disappeared. Donald Trump dealt with them. And Obama policy, Obama structure for the Islamization was truncated by the policy of Trump. Many people don't, this I'm telling you today, please go back and reflect and see what I'm telling you. Everything was truncated by Donald Trump foreign policy. ISIS was wiped away from Iraq to Afghanistan, Taliban, to Syria, everywhere was calm. And then they use media to destroy Donald Trump, just like they are trying to destroy me. <laughs> they use media. Every media was against Donald Trump. They tell you he's sick, he's, a, he's too flamboyant. Is it sickness? Is this flamboyant we are talking about? We are talking about the foreign policy that have restored peace globally. He went far as far as even talking to the North Korea, he visited there. There was a process of restoring peace globally. And then Obama and their multinational corporation came back again and started campaigning for Joe Biden. We warned Americans. They say it was not our business. It was our business in American politics. We warned them as is what is to come today. All of them are crying. All of them are crying for Donald Trump. All of them are crying that Joe Biden is this and that. That is exactly what is going on today. Joe Biden administration funded Iran up to $6 billion, or more than $6 billion. The same Iran is attacking Israel. The same America is defending Israel against Iran. What does that tell you? So if you ask a question about how America is funding Nigeria, it is kind of funny. But these are people who have ulterior motive that only them know. And like I said, there is somebody behind the scene, and the person is Obama. Obama is Biden, Biden is Obama. So the question of what they do and give money or aid to these countries is just for formality. They turn around, use that money to fund the attack against the American people. And that is exactly what is happening in Nigeria today. The same American general came to the Sahel region. He was making comment about Boko Haram, Al Qaeda, Iswab, that it is only in Nigeria that have been able to work together. And what they are looking for is to make Nigeria a safe haven so they can now begin to attack the West and America. And he said they are very sure that this is what they want to do, but they don't know when this particular attack is going to start. The same America 
today can watch how Hamas came to Nigeria and a platform was given to the leader of Hamas and the land has been allocated to them in the northern Nigeria to mine Californium to raise money to fight against Israel. The same America is watching Biafra, see how Biafra is going to do. Instead of them, to Amos, we are not Islamic rebels. But you see, because we carry Bible like them, they will not arm us. Because we are peaceful like them, they will not arm us. They rather arm Taliban. They rather arm terrorists in Libya. They will arm rebel terrorists in Syria. But when it comes to Christians, they will never act. They will never arm you. So what are they trying to let you know? They are trying to let you know that you must be radical before you can get the attention of the world. Go and ponder on what I have just said today. Have you seen them arming all Islamic rebels around the world? But when it comes to Christian rebels, if they call us rebels, because that's what they call us. When it comes to Christian separatists, they will let you to suffer. They will allow you to kill yourself for 30 years, like they did in Sudan. In Sudan, not in South Sudan. 30 years of fight before they now say, come and uh, have your freedom. But when it comes to Islamic rebels, you will see America funding them. They have did it to Taliban. Everybody knows the history of Taliban. It was to use Taliban to fight Russia. He failed. They have done it to Libya. He failed. They did it to Syria. He failed. But when it comes to Christians, us, we are Christians. We believe the same faith with America. We have the same constitution with America. We believe in human dignity with America. They will turn back on us. So, and the person engineering this current America policy is Obama, pro-Islamic state. Thank you. Uh, please, sir, my prime minister, in 30 seconds, please. Sir. I don't know if I can speak in 30 seconds. Go what, from, what, from what you just explained, sir, and I realize that America in secret is funding terrorists to take over people's land so that they can form alliance with these terrorists after the terrorists have conquered and take away the resources of the people. That is my understanding. But I want to say to America and Britain that no matter how thick the darkness is, it cannot overshadow the light. The light is the truth. And what makes you a powerful nation is your ability to defend the truth, not the amount of the weapons of war that you have. But if America has chosen under Joe Biden to turn their back against the truth, to turn their back against justice, this will mark the beginning of America and Britain's fall. Thank you very much, my Prime Minister, for the explanation. God bless you, sir. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Rage and Fury. And I can feel the rage in you there. Thank you very much. We we'll move and I appreciate our Prime Minister. That was a very detailed explanation on the uh, the, even the deaf could hear it, that the, the package truth that cannot be covered. Thank you so much. And then we'll go very fast, please. Uh, 60 seconds to you, uh, Marzi, Chine, Madam, please quickly bring your question. 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, good evening, my Prime Minister, Prime Minister of the Afro people. We, we greet you, sir. We, see, we are seeing your handwork and thank you so much for standing up for this wonderful uh for our, bro our wonderful brothers this way and i just want to say i uh, ask you something please can you please pardon us uh, and uh, tell that people that uh, that doesn't know the relationship between biafra and israel can you please share more light about the relationship between us thank you sir thank you very much uh, as everybody who may, or those who may not uh, understand the relationship between us and Israel, we are the descendant of the Jews, and we are part of the Jews of Africa. A lot of people, a lot of researchers have actually said that Israel came from us, that the Jews came from us, and that we are the original Jews. So there has, a, there has been a lot of uh, uh, research you know, and, uh, uh, you know, scholar opinion about Biafra, the descendant 
the people of the God. So we are, you know, I would say the original Jews. And having said that, during the time, even before the Biafra War, the state of Israel participated, although that time they played the double standard of supporting Biafra and at the same time supporting Israel, they're supporting Nigeria. And I wouldn't blame them because they worked based on the information available to them as at that time. But now, a lot of secret is out. So they wouldn't do that double standard again. During the time of the Biafra Nigeria war, over 50 Israeli Jewish organizations supported Biafra because they have come to understand that indeed we are the people of God, descendant of Jews, like you have them in Ethiopia. You know, it is only in Biafra land that Nigeria succeeded in ridiculing the Jews, the Biafra people. But in Ethiopia today, for example, they recognized the Ethiopian Jews. But Nigeria and the Britain worked tirelessly to ridicule us before any anybody, before any government in the world. They ridiculed us. They told them very bad things about Biafra and in quest to silent and block whoever that will wish to help Biafra to gain independence from Nigeria. So the war we are fighting is the most difficult, the most complicated, the most difficult task. And our freedom will come like no other freedom in the history of mankind. And that's why we understand the complexity of the of fighting for our freedom to exit Nigeria. So in a nutshell, the answer to your question or to address the people is that we, the Biafra people, are the people of Jews. And we are the descendants of Jews and we are the black Jews, just like you have them in Ethiopia. And the Ethiopia Jews, for example, were recognized by the Israeli government and they, are, they can travel to Israel without visa. They are treated just like them, you know, one of them in Israel, but not the people of Biafra because Nigeria and Britain made it possible to block that particular opportunity and possibility. But we are not going to give up. We know that in time to come, we are not going to look for them, they will look for us. Just like today, as this war is going on, we know that now it is just a, technolog a technological war where the drone is doing its job. They are firing rockets and all that. But the time will come when they are going to need the ground, need the ground truth. Biafra will offer them 15,000 men. It may even increase to just to show that we will never forget our route. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. I'm so happy with your question. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll say, uh, talking about uh, recognizing uh, Jews in in, uh, in in Ethiopia, I also want to tell you, sir, in Aguilera, I'm from Anamu, and I was grow, I was born and brought up in Aguilera. In Aguilera, there is a place called Enugu Aguilera. That Enugu Aguilera uh, was is where uh, uh, Eri was buried. If, if you want to, uh, so, uh, to, uh, to our listeners, go to Genesis chapter forty six verse sixteen. You hear, you will see where uh, Bible mentioned Eri. Eri left uh, Egypt. So let me not go far from that place. So every year. In Aguilar, we celebrate a, 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 a day, and in that uh, that day, Israel people used to come there. Some dwarf people who, uh, used to do uh, some rituals, and that place that he uh, was buried, there was uh, there is a, a tree, tree uh, one tree that have three uh, three uh, fruits, that is three trinity. It uh, that that tree grow up where he was buried. Thank you, sir. If you want to investigate, go to Aguilar. You will see it there. Thank you so thank much, you very, Thank you very much. We know we know the area, you know, and we know the uh, the people of God that are 
you know, the history is very rich there, but I'm not here to share the history of uh, the Eri kingdom or, or Eri people in Aguilera and all that. Everybody knows that. But just for the people who don't understand why Biafrans are standing with Israel, we are not actually standing with Israel, we are standing for ourselves because we and Israel are the same. So, so it is, uh, we were standing with Israel just because we found ourselves in different climes, different country, different zone. So standing with Israel is also standing for ourselves. We can never be wiped away and wiped out of the surface of the earth. Uh, you know, uh, exterminating Israel, annihilating Israel is not the same as annihilating us. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you, Chine Mere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as you go back to listening, and we bring up uh, national opinion. National opinion, your hand is up. Please, 60 seconds, bring your question. All right, greetings, everyone. Greetings, Mr. Simon Iba. Greetings, everyone on this space. Um, I just wanted to ask a little question. You know, this situation on ground has been there for many years. And if you go to Mazen and the Kano's profile page, you are going to see that the flag of Israel is hoisted on his, his timeline, you know, to show you our our collaboration and our, our togetherness with the people of Israel. So these um, attacks on Israel has come as a huge shock to us. So my question is, what is our defense mechanism right here in Nigeria? Because we are endangered. If you check last two weeks, there were reports of um, movement of the Shiites in Abuja. They were, um, you know, protesting about the Palestine and the whole distance. So what is our, our defense mechanism? What defense mechanisms do you think are in place for Biafrans in case of any impending danger? Because you know, just just wanted to ask. Uh, of course, the defense mechanism is not what I'm going to share with you. It's an intelligent, is an, uh, is an, uh, um, you know, a security question. But what I can assure you is that during the time that we're killing us, whenever there is issue with Israel and Palestine, there we do not have liberation army. We don't have arms to defend ourselves. So that is difference today. That's why you have not seen any record of somebody being killed, we have a very killed in the north, or their business is being born. Because like I said, any day they do it this time around, we will divide Nigeria into two. We will cut Nigeria, not divide. We we'll cut it into two. And those who understand what I mean by cutting into two will understand me. Of course, uh, not to ordinary person in Nigeria, they will not understand. But the military, the terrorist organization called military knows what I mean by cutting Nigeria into two. We will cut it into two to start with. Thank you. Thank you so much, PM. Thank you, National uh, Opinion. We move, we move. Please um, make your question very quick and brief. Mazi Chidera, MNK, please uh, bring your question up very quickly. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, my PM. I greet you, sir. Um, I want to say a very big thanks to you for coming up, you know, to you know, shed more light on what is happening. I just have a few questions to ask. Uh, we know that uh, Biafra remains envi enviable to other countries, just like you have likely said. We are not going to deny who we are. So what I want to ask is that, what is this? Uh, what if this uh, this war escalates? How will it contribute towards gearing or the declaration of, uh, of Biafra? Will it going to help us in the declaration of Biafra? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Of course, everything worked for good for them that love God. Have that answered answer your question? I didn't hear you clearly. It was a break. I said, I said, I said Def definitely it is going to work for the good of Biafra, for the freedom of Biafra. Like Bible said, everything worked for good for them that love God. And we are the people that love God. We are the people of God. Thank you. And, Thank then, you, also, sir. and then also, please uh, meet yourself because I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then also to the brother. I just think I can uh, hey. Please, yeah. I have to remove him. Go ahead. Yeah. And then also to the brother that asked question previously that uh, Mazin and Dikano had uh, the uh, Israeli flag on his uh, timeline. 
Hello, good afternoon, sir. Mm -hmm. Mute yourself again. If you mute yourself, we'll remove you. Mute yourself until you are called upon. Until I ask you to mute, for mute please. That uh, Mazen and the Kano has an uh, Israeli flag on his timeline. Yes, he does. He does have Israeli flag on his timeline, just like myself. If you go to my Twitter, to my ex, you will know that the star of David is there. Boldly, we are not hiding it. We are not shying away from it, from who we are. And in the Biafra flag today, you have the Star of David boldly in the center of the sun. And so, but when he was kidnapped from Kenya, the people whom were following him, the people he surrounded himself with, what did they do? They started attacking Israel. That should tell you enough, a lot you need to know. The people whom he was fighting Biafra with, who was praising him when he was in Israel. When he appeared in Israel, they were praising him, praising Israel. Immediately he was captured because they believe they have done it all. That we, he will never come out again. What did they do today? They are supporting Palestine. They are now abusing Israel. The same people are telling you about Beth. And that is to show to you those who your your enemies within yourself. So think about it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ebu PM. It is obvious how we know that very clearly. And now they are calling Israel the evil and they are calling Palestine as the light, you know, and they still say they are following Mazen Mamdikan. Thank you. Please uh, unmute yourself and bring your question. David Nanna. David Nanna. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, my Prime Minister, thank you, sir, for setting up this space for Biafrans to ask questions. I really appreciate you and I appreciate what you are doing, sir. We are, we are very much happy. I want to ask a question. You see, before now, there was a time you asked the Southeast governors to give Biafrans, to give then, that was then when the Eastern Security Network was in place. You said the Southeastern governor should give an opportunity for the Eastern Security Network that they will make sure they get rid of all the terrorists and all the kidnappers in Biafra land, and you were not listening to. Now, since the inauguration of the Biafra Liberation Army, there have been the, the issue of crime in Biafra land has been minimized. Even up to this moment, Biafrans can now go to the farm. Biafrans are now sleeping with their eyes closed. I want to ask you, sir, what method, what is, the, what, is the, what is behind all these things that you are doing? Because even those who could not believe that Biafra land could be, could be gotten rid of terrorists and the kidnappers are now being happy of what you are doing what is the what is what do you have what is the method behind this your your, your way of making things happen in biafra land even when people are doubting your resolve to that conclusion sir i want to know because you have done wonderfully well that biafrans are happy i can sleep with their two eyes closed so what is the what is the what is the uh, the secret behind the success that you have achieved so far sir thank you thank you very much this is a very important and very nice question the secret is that you need to first of all identify your problem, the source of your problem. And it is applicable in every aspect of life, both in your health, both in school, both in your work life. Before you are able to solve your problem, you must identify the source of the problem. If you are sick today, you go to hospital. The doctors will conduct a series of tests to know why you are sick. And then when they identify and they start attacking the root of that sickness, that's how things are done. So what we did was to find the root cause of the insecurity in the Afghan land. And we find out that the Nigeria terrorist army, police, and every forces wearing the uniform of Nigeria are the source, the primary source. In fact, not just the primary source, the primary and the secondary source of this security, in addition to their killings, in addition to the extrajudicial killing, undocumented killing, forceful disappearance of Biafra people, 
kidnapping. So we identify the problem of insecurity and start attacking it. That's why you see that insecurity have reduced to the minimum. And the only people that are crying about this security are the same people who commit the crime, Nigerian security agencies. So once you engage them, the crime will reduce. And that is exactly what happened in Biafra land. You know that before now, before the formation of the Biafra Liberation Army, kidnapping is happening or was happening at the checkpoint of Nigeria military checkpoint, Nigeria naval checkpoint, police checkpoint, Air Force checkpoint. It is only in Biafra land that you have Air Force mounting checkpoint. You have the SSS. It is only in Biafra land that you have all the different security terrorist agents in Nigeria mounting roadblock. So when you start engaging them, the kidnapping and the crime will reduce. And that's exactly what has happened. If you think I am lying, go around other Nigeria state and see what is happening there. Nobody has been able to engage them. The killing in Kaduna, they will accuse the military of aiding it. The killing in Plateau, they accuse the military of aiding it. The killing in Zamfara, they accuse the military of aiding it. Every killing in Nigeria that has recorded the mass killing of the people in Nigeria have always the military hand in it. So they are the source. They give them arms, they give them protection, they aid them, they even coordinate the attack against the people. Go to the last attack, the last 10 attack on the indigenous people in Nigeria today, you are going to hear the story of how military aided them directly. And the worst part is, you know, or the good part is that the people, the victim are no longer afraid to speak up. So they tell you right before your very own eyes the the role the military played in the attack against their people so the victim are telling the stories on and until they start attacking the military that are aiding this terrorist attack they will continue to live in idp camp so biafra have identified our problem and we're tackling it thank you can i ask a, a follow-up question Why? sir Okay, my second question is this. Don't you think that you, the, 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 the reason why they put your names among those wanted in Nigeria is connected with the fact that you are dislodging the terrorists and the kidnappers from Biafra land? Of course, that is the only reason. There is no other reason. The only reason is that we find out the mechanism to deal with them. And it happens that since the history of the Biafra agitation and liberation, we are the only people who have actually identified the source of the problem and tackling it. That's why you see them doing what they have never done before. That's why you see them talking about me at the National Assembly. There has never been any time that the Biafra agitators, agitators was being discussed at the National Assembly by all senators who are the product of Nigeria. And everybody, even before the kidnap of Mazin Ambikano, they have never discussed him at the National Assembly, declaring him wanted. So you can imagine what they would do to themselves. Imagine the Kano was kidnapped in Kenya. He was not declared wanted by the, by the state, by the terrorist state. And look at what they are doing to him now. Then you will understand, you know, by the time if uh, they get themselves, or how they would do it. So we know, and that's why I said, I am learning from what happened to others. And Nigeria will face the ruthless, the ruthlessness of the self-defense of the Afro people. We are just starting. They should wait until the declaration of the Afro in December 2nd. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and, yeah, then also, and then also, I want to use the opportunity to, you know, to correct some certain uh, information that are circulating on social media. On December 2nd, we are not declaring Biafra for these illiterates that are going from one platform to another shouting how someone ever want to declare Biafra, that you cannot declare Biafra. We are not declaring Biafra. We are declaring the restoration of independent state of Biafra. The Biafra that was declared in 1967 to 1970 is what we are declaring the restoration. And I want people to understand the English language there. Thank you. Thank you, my PM. Thank you, my PM. Everybody know that Biafra existed as a nation 
and the, a nation that existed cannot suddenly stop existing. So, and the, if they don't understand it, they should go back to school. Thank you, uh, Abu PM. And uh, there's somebody I just brought into this room. We are not just OES members here. We we are not afraid of our haters. And that's why I brought you in the charisma. The charisma, I saw your thumbs down. Yes, and that's yes. That's why I brought you in. What is that your question? That's getting you angry and making you thumbs down. Please make it count. You have 60 seconds. Okay, then. Um, good evening to you all. And uh, thank you for bringing me up. I really have something to say because I've been joining the conversation like a lot of times, a couple of times also. Um, to me, it's not a question. Before, before, sorry, before he start, what he is here to do, he have to make it very clear. He is here to ask question, not opinion. We don't need his opinion here. Let him ask Good. question, and I will address him, not his giving his opinion. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay. Please ask a question. Make sure it's a question. Okay, then uh, let me yeah. make it a question. Let me make it a question. What's the purpose? I really want to know the purpose of declaring the Biafra Nation in. Like, yeah, I really want to know that. Let me make it a question. So I want to hear a very clear and, you know, very, like, good opinion why why we must make a Biafra nation in Nigeria. Thank you. That's my question. Not in Nigeria. We're never part of Nigeria. First of all, Nigeria is never a country. And we need to start discussing the root, you know, the root but, cause of the Biafra agitation. Do you know the root cause of the Biafra agitation? It was the Republic of Nigeria, I knew, not. Republic you, of Biafra. You know, so you if you know, say okay, Biafra is know, not a nation, do you know how Nigeria, you know how Nigeria become a nation, they become a country in the first place? Of course, I do. How? So how? how? I I told you say I should ask a question. Let you answer. Why you? I think you are asking me a question instead. Yeah, because you didn't ask any question. Your question. I asked a question. question. I asked a question. Why must we declare a Biafra nation? Is, and uh, does Biafra come before and Nigeria? And Nigeria, Nigeria is the Republic of Nigeria. Uh, listen, uh, of Nigeria. Please, can you listen, please? Just listen. And, you, say uh, why, you say why I want to declare a Biafra. First of all, Biafra has been in existence over 5,000 years before Nigeria. Nigeria was just 100 years ago. Nigeria was forcefully amalgamated to become a country in 1914. During the amalgamation, Biafra consent was not seeked. Biafra did not give their consent to become one Nigeria. And before then, Nigeria was forcefully amalgamated under the gun and bullet of a man called Lord Lugan. So it was not a free will of even your own forefathers. They rejected Nigeria. And today, after 100 years, according to the story and the agreement, they said after 100 years, people can now renegotiate the coexistence of their 18 nationalities within Nigeria space. In 2014 was that 100 years. They sweep it under the, under the carpet. And that was the reason why we say we are not going to continue this particular union that has never favored us, the union that will never allow us to excel, to compete innovatively among other nations, the union that doesn't allow our women to have good hospital, the union that does not give that is eradicating innovation and bringing tsunami. The union that does not allow our people to go to school and learn how to compete internationally. The union that has not given security only to supervise the debt of millions of their friends. The union that have never brought anything on the table other than debt of many nationalities. This is the union we don't want to be part of. That is the reason for Biafra declaration. Is that clear? Yeah, Mr. Simon, it's clear. Let me say one last thing before I drop. Uh, instead of that, I think uh, uh, the so we need to find a solution to that, not we have, we have, violence. We have, we have, not violence. Solution. No, Listen. violence will we're, not work. It will only destroy. Can you please, okay, can okay, you please we're, listen? We're, okay, can, can he go ahead? He's making a very good, uh, very good uh, comment here. Go ahead, come, come, continue with I, your I say, comment. Mr. Prime Minister, violence will never work. We need to find a solution instead of violence. We need um, to... Okay, okay, thank you very much. Go, thank you, very go on. Much. Thank thank you, you very so much. much. I would like to I would like to give you opportunity to say something again. Now let me address the issue of violence. The question you should be asking is who is the one bringing the violence? Is it the Nigeria state or the Biafra people? The answer is the Nigeria state are bringing the violence, not the Biafra people. The Biafra people are just defending themselves after many years and decades of violence by the Nigeria state. In 2000, from 2015 to 2017, we have witnessed wanton killing, mass killing mass murder of the Biafra agitators that were carrying ordinary flag. Are you going to call that uh, Holy Communion? 
It was violent from the Nigeria state. In 2017, Mazinam Bikano House was invaded with armor tank. They shoot and leveled 28 persons. According to people who were there, they said they killed over 100 persons, but 28 was reported officially. Was there any violence from the Biafra side from that time? By that time, the answer is no. In all, hundreds of Biafras were massacred, unarmed, only flag. It is the act of violence by the Nigeria state. In Aba, 150 was reported by Amnesty International in a playground, in a, play, a, play, a playing or playground in school where they were, where they, where they gathered, I was chanting and singing music. The security agent of Nigeria invaded that school, killed 150 on the spot. Now, after this series of killing, I came on board. I said, I will not be part of a, the Biafra agitation where people will follow me and then they will get killed and I will shout and nobody listen to me. And what I'm going to do is I will activate the internationally recognized self-defense of the Biafra people. Under international law, we begin to provide the same equal measures of force that they are using to kill them. If they come with AK-47, we make sure that Biafra have AK-47 to defend themselves. If they come with GPMG, we make sure that Biafra have GPMG to defend themselves. And that's what is going on today. So where, who is the one who brought the violence? Is it us who have been killed in numbers and decided to defend ourselves? Or the government who have been killing and killing even those who have nothing to do with Biafra, they kill them. Children, they kill them. I want you to go and reflect on this. Who are the ones who brought insecurity or violence in the eastern region of Nigeria? It is the Nigeria government, not us. We are only as a result of the attack against our people and we defend ourselves. And today, we will not only defend, we will also embark on offensive very soon because the best defense is to attack. We have seen that they are not going to let us be we have seen that their plan is to exterminate Biafra people. So we will start to make life very uncomfortable by the delegitimization process we are already going. So we are going to start visiting them very soon. It is not just about to keep going and start waiting for when they come to kill us, we, are, we defend ourselves. No, we will make sure they leave our land. We are now in real business to liberate Biafra. It's no longer the time they will kill and will shout on social media. Nobody listen to us. So my brother, that is what is going on. We are defending ourselves against the violence of Nigeria State. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very would much. You, would uh, you say now? Let me ask you a question uh, because uh, you, before you were, you know, you came as, you know, but you were, you were talking reasonably. So what I said now was it a lie on the attack on the airport? Uh, Mr. Minister, what you said to me right now is well detailed and uh, it's understandable also, actually. You were defending yourself, which is uh, quite something reasonable to do. But uh, I know, I know, I know. I just, just asked you, I just ask you, I want to, I want an exact, you know, a, a very good uh, answer. Okay. You what know, like, it? do you think that what I said was lies? Did no, I don't think what you said was lies because I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, I read a lot of history, a lot of things, like I watch a lot. So what you said, like, it's, I can't say it's a lie because may, it might be true, you know. Uh, also, maybe what I heard might be the lie or might be the true or what you say might be the true or might be the lie, but I can't justify whether you're saying the true or you're saying okay, the lie. Okay, now let me well ask you, did you, did you, hear, did you have, did you had any time when IPOB were killed? About one fifty of them during the uh, praying in uh, Abia State in Abia. I I did I did hear that. I Thank you very much. Course. Thank you very much. Did you also hear that they were killed in a city in a place called Mpo during the May thirtieth, two thousand seventeen? Of course, I have okay, been you. following the Biafra story for a very long time for years. Okay, now. thank you. And, and, you, and you agree with me that in all those killings, there has never been any consequences on the Nigeria side. That's true. I agree. With okay, that. so now that is where the consequences have started. So don't see it as we are the one bringing violence. We are ready for peaceful uh, discussion to exit. And diplomacy, the, for the definitely. diplomacy, we are also we are also following it diplomatically. And that's why because, we have and that's why we have government in exile. The government and, in exile is to take charge of every affair of the Biafra people in diplomacy, diplomatically, and of course as a government. So the formation yeah. of the Biafra government in exile is to follow the diplomatic channel. Why we cannot fold our hands? As we fight diplomatically, we will also 
arm our people to defend themselves in Biafra land. And that's what is going on. So we are fighting. Because I think your people shouldn't pay for what the Nigerian government did. Your, your people shouldn't pay for that because there, there are going to be a lot of life that's going to be lost. So I think your people shouldn't pay for that. that. Exactly. That's what we are trying as much as possible to minimize casualties. But it is this, the same Nigeria state that comes to bond market, bond the houses of innocent people who has, not, who has nothing to do with the Biafra movement. And because when they lose, you know, Nigerian army are not trained to be army. They are nomadic army. They are the, they are the people, the definition of terrorism. Because the terrorism is when you use fear, install fear on people not to rise up against you, not to do, use fear to acquire or get what you want. That is the definition of terrorism. And that's exactly what they do. So today they have been able to, you know, put fear, install fear in many people that nobody can actually speak against them in Nigeria. And this is a democracy. A democratic country where military are having checkpoints everywhere. In the entire Biafra land, you have more than 60 checkpoints from one state to another. Is that a democracy? The answer is no. So they are creating this fear using terrorism, and we are engaging them. And we just started. It's just less than one year. They are crying and uh, seeking for help internationally. We are dealing with them, including the mercenaries they bring to our land. They will have, to have all been decimated. Go and ask questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Charisma. Thank you for being very, very you know, uh, gentle with your question and very reasonable. And uh, you need to go and look for some of those videos. We have evidences and we have videos. There is a clear video that is out there where you will see this um, full uh, um, army, Nigeria, Janja army, shooting directly into houses. They were shooting and they were. Please, shooting. I would like to see because I haven't seen any. You haven't seen this? Uh, okay, no problem. If you can just. Uh, 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 DM me on uh, on my uh, DM. I will give you link to all these videos. You are going to see them all for yourself, and then you will pass the message, message across to know that we are not the ones that are looking for trouble. We just want to defend ourselves and then live in peace. Thank you very much, and Chuko Kadama, bless you. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll move ahead, and uh, the question should come now from um, Brother Don. Brother Don, please uh, unmute yourself and bring your question. Yeah. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, my PM, the guy that is doing it the best way ever. Uh, I just want to, uh, a question really, but not quite a question because there is no question I can ask to PM that really, that he has already covered everything he's doing. He's doing it by the template. I want to help this brother now that asked question questions about Nigeria and one thing. Please, there is one thing people don't know. If you go and use artificial intelligence, AI, or chat GPT, ask about Nigeria, ask about Biafra, it will give you, because it's said, you don't know about these things. It will bring out everything you want. It will even tell you about the man PM and the man, our leader, Mazi, Namdekano. You're talking about evidence about killing people. These people, me standing here, these people killed my father in Barikin Ladi. So what you, so if I rise up today and say I'm, I'm defending my own people, you said, why say we didn't take any violence to them. Please, they are the ones, you know, like our PM is saying, all checkpoints mounted everywhere. It's just a place, you know, that we are so, uh, uh, we, 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 we make money. We are people who, and they just come to collect money and kill, and they are using us as a business hub. PM, please keep it on. Just keep it on. I can't, I can't say anything. It, the Israelites are our brothers, and we, our brothers, they will be for eternity. Uh, one other thing is that these people, they, they tell you, keep nothing. I don't like people using arrest for our leader. Please, please, all those people that use it, take it away when you maybe slip of tongue, it's not arrest, they kidnapped him. And if you go into the Bible, it said uh, Abraham begat, Abraham begat. The Nigerian government from uh, Buhari, from everyone, they begat all the kidnappers you see they moving everywhere. That's their children. PM, I salute you. I'm standing up and I'm saluting you in Jesus' mighty name. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. All right, uh, please uh, grab the microphone. Marzi Benchuks, Agubosim. 
Uh, thank you so much, Mazi uh, Ralph. Uh, thank you, Honorable PM. Thank you so much for the major wonderful tax you 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 take upon yourself in every ramification. Uh, PM, uh, my question is: uh, you you have promised Israel to uh, give give them uh, military aid. Uh, do you think it's not going to be a pressure to our BLA? Concerning the attacks uh, 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 beyond us uh, coming in the forthcoming of our restoration of uh, Biafra. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. 15,000 men to Israel is not going to affect us in any way. The only thing we need is more of the weapons to defend our land. That's all. Enough weapons is what we need. 20,000 men cannot even affect us as of today. So what we need is weapons for men we have enough and we can we can offer that help to Israel if they need ground forces up to 15 to 20 to 20,000. Thank you. Yeah, just quickly to, to join you know, because uh, why I'm saying this is uh, Mozart, you know, they, they know how to go and pick their own when it comes to, to in terms of danger. Yeah, they, they, so, they war, they war today is not the uh, war of Mossad. This is not a war of liberation. It's a war, it's a confessional war that is going on. And like I said, at this point, it is still a technological war, which a drone is doing the job, and they are firing rockets and all that. But when the time for ground troop, we are ready for that. And it is not going to affect us in any way. Thank you. Thank rather, you so much. Rather, rather, it will boost the Biafra defense and the Biafra liberation. You know what I mean. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, PM. Thank you, Mazi. It's a win-win for us. Our men are surplus. If I need the Wungwara, Wungwara, men, men need you everywhere. Men, they, men, they. Thank you very much. Okay, we move uh, Onye, Onye, Onye Chi, Kamalo, Onye Chi Kamalo, please. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Go ahead, please. Good evening. Can you hear me, sir? Please go ahead. We can hear you. Have 60 seconds, please. Okay, okay. Um, good evening to the Prime Minister of the People's Republic. Good evening to his cabinet members. Good evening to the Biafrans and lovers of freedom over the world. Um, my question is on, I want to lay emphasis on the restoration of the independent state of Biafra. I wanted to ask the Prime Minister on how the age of Biafra be calculated. Is it going to be based on when Ojuku declared Biafra, or is it when it's going to be declared in Finland in Lati later this year? Or are we going to acknowledge that Biafra is over uh, a pre-colonial entity and maybe start counting from there, similar to like China or something? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's my first question. Biafra is going to be all inclusive. It's beyond the Ojuku declaration at the same time before the pre-colonial era. So our declaration is going to base on the restoration of the 1967 Declaration of Biafra and will maintain those uh, state and map. Okay, and um, um, I wanted to get your reaction properly, Pierre, about the declaration of Yoruba Nation yesterday. Is this something the Biafra should take seriously? Because I've seen you tweet about it and um, some have even accused you of being influential in what happened yesterday. So I wanted to get your reaction properly. So, so are, where, where are they accusing me of being inflation to what happened? No, like, what, there's something you posted yesterday where they okay. said uh, they are based on the opium of uh, Simon okay, or something Simonet. like that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, yeah, anyway, the thing is that uh, we are supporting anybody that someone courage to rise up against the uh, terrorist state of Nigeria. So it does not matter whether what you do is uh, right or wrong, so long as you call someone courage to fight for your people who will, who will support it. So whatever happened yesterday, it may not be the right way to go about it, but yes, for the courage, the summoned to make that demonstration and the awareness it has created, I like it. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move.